There comes a time in the life of every young man for serious contemplation and wise evaluation concerning his future. For decisions determine destiny. So one of the greatest qualities that I feel like Kent has is he understands ministering. Kent is the greatest minister that I know. In fact, he probably was informed, the brethren probably told him what ministering, the, the new ministering program before it came out. I don't know, Kent, he, he probably figured it out somehow. But you take a look at um, all of the big ward activities, and Kent is there helping out, setting it up, and taking it down. Um, you take a look at campouts by any auxiliary, Young men, young women, it doesn't matter. Whoever's hosting the camp out, you know, Kent's there and he's helping out. And service projects, well, Kent's probably there helping out too. Um, outside of service projects, when Kent... <laughs> people don't know this. I'm just kidding, everybody knows this. Kent helps out everybody outside of service projects. He makes his own service projects. And... Um, of course, he's been a huge help in the young men's program. Um, I've learned so many things from him. I'm sorry, Kent, I don't remember how to tie all those knots. I, I know I should have done a better job. I still have that knife that I got from from tying knots. <laughs> uh, I'll explain it when I come back home. You guys are going to have to remind me. Um, but <laughs> Kent just really understands what it means to minister, what it means to reach out to people and to help them, uh, to help them in spiritual things and to help them in temporal things. He's really one of the greatest influences in my life. And um, Kent, thank you so much for everything you've done. Um, because of your help, um, because of your work, uh, I'm out here on a mission now. <laughs> And it's been an awesome experience. I absolutely love it. So again, Ken, thanks for all that you do. And keep up all the good work. The scout, in his promise, undertakes to do his duty to his king and country only in the second place. His first duty is to God. There is a higher mission before us, namely the promotion of the kingdom of God. That is the rule of peace and goodwill on earth. Hey Kent, thank you so much for everything that you've done for us, for the young men, for the scouts, for me, and uh, everything that you've done for the ward. You are a great serviceman and you're a very hard worker and uh, you definitely helped us know that was something that we needed to do as well. 
you're a good inspiration, a good example, and uh, you definitely helped me along my way. And uh, I just want to thank you for that. And uh, hopefully you keep having callings in the church that help you help the youth because you're definitely really good at that. All right. See ya. Duty to God means a lot more than saying a prayer every time you need a favor. A lot more. Duty to God is simply that voluntary gesture you must make and remake a million times in your lifetime as a statement of your recognition that there's someone above this universe who watches over this universe. By into whom each of us is a favorite son. Buenas, uh, hola a todos. Gracias por permitirme compartir un video con ustedes. Que no sé si se acuerda español, pero bueno, yo no me acuerdo inglés. Así que estamos en el horno. But I guess I can't video call you because it would be super late here and early there. So I am sending a video to give you thanks for all that you did. Sorry that I, I really don't talk good in English anymore. But I want to share a scripture with you all. In Alma chapter 48, verse 17, 16, 17, and 18. And like Nephi says, we should liken the scriptures unto ourselves. Well, I'm going to liken the scriptures unto you, Kent. Okay? It says, And also that God would make it known unto them whither they should go to defend themselves against their enemies. And by so doing, the Lord would deliver them. And this was the faith of Moroni, or the faith of Kent. And his heart did glory in it, not in the shedding of blood, but in doing good and preserving his people, yea, and keeping the commandments of God, yea, and resisting iniquity. Doesn't that just sound like you, Kent, in doing good, in preserving your people or, or your young men, and in resisting iniquity, keeping the commandments? And we continue, it says, Yea, verily, verily, I say unto you, if all men had been, and were, and ever would be like unto Kent, Behold, the very powers of hell <clears throat> would have been shaken forever. Yea, the devil would never have power over the hearts of the children of men. <clears throat> Behold, Ken was a man like unto Ammon, the son of Mosiah. Yea, even the other sons of Mosiah. Yea, and also Alma and his sons. For they were all men of God. If all men were like unto you, Kent, the powers of hell would have no power, no glory on this earth. And I know that to be true because I've been with you since I was 12 years old and you accepted me in everything. Mowing, mowing lawns, scouts, random campouts, eating grasshoppers, and, and the stories go on, fishing trips, everything. And so I just want to tell you that I love you so much and I'm so thankful for for everything that you've done for me, for your support, even though you're super far away, that you're always helping me here on the mission, and everything you've taught me has come with me. I still remember how to use a weed whacker. I've even had to use it on the mission. I still remember how to, I, I don't know, do stuff. I built a fire once as well, so that was really good. And I just want you to, want you to know that you've changed my life, and you've changed the life of of every young man that's passed through the Boy Scouts with you. And, and I know that they're all super grateful for what you've done for your, I don't know, 30 some odd years of changing lives through the Young Men program. And I still hope that you're in the Young Men's program with this, with this new thing that the church is bringing, bringing to pass, coming to pass, I don't know, that they're doing. Because I know that it's inspired of God and it's going to change us. The youth are going to receive more revelation. It's going to help them prepare more for missions. So I hope that you have the chance to keep working with the young men and helping them come closer to their Father in Heaven like you've helped me come closer to my Father in Heaven. Love you so much. I just want you to know that I'm having a good time out here. They still sell milk in a bag like they did in Chile when you were a hip missionary and it still tastes good in a bag. So, 
give my testimony that this is the work of God and that this is His church, that the Book of Mormon is true. I still have my little Book of Mormon. I've seen this book change the lives of everybody that has sincerely read it and looked for the truth. And I have one year more to keep looking for those people and helping them. And thank you for everything, Kent. I love you so very much. And I share this video in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Believe in anything you want to believe in, but keep God at the top of it. With Him, life can be a beautiful experience. Without Him, well, you're just biding time. Hey, Ken, congratulations on your award, man. Um, Sandy Erickson and a few others reached out to me and asked me if, we, if I would be willing to um, share a little bit of a memory, I think is what they're asking for, uh, about how you have impacted my life. Um, I think the one thing, there was a lot of experiences with you, Ken, that were memorable and enjoyable and like life altering types of experiences. Um, but there's one in particular that always has stuck out to me and has definitely played a big part about who I am today. I'm not sure if you'd remember it or not, but it was my second year that we went to Maple Dell and we had our camp counselor, Katie. Um, and Katie was the only female camp camp counselor at like the whole place and we really prided ourselves on that and I think there was one day that all the guys and us um, got together and we made our uh, we had to do a camp cheer and we made ours about Katie and we ended up getting a little carried away and we kind of started catcalling at Katie we were being really disrespectful as a bunch of young men and as about as boy scouts and um, I remember you came in and you, I think it was like the one time I'd ever seen you really, like not mad, but you were very firm with us. And you taught us about what it is to be a man and how we respect women and how we shouldn't be saying these things and how we need to hold ourselves to a higher standard. Um, and I just remember that and I just remember being blown away by there was way more to being a scout than just being able to you know, chop wood or survive out in the woods. It was how we carried ourselves as men everywhere. And I think that's the biggest thing is you impacted not just me, but a lot of young men into becoming actual men and not just a bunch of boys. And I am so very grateful for the chance that I had to be able to know you and to work with you and um, to see the lives that you changed as well along the way. So congratulations, Ken. You deserve this. Um, wish I could have been down there, but again, congratulations, man. Love you. I am pleased to stand firm for an organization that teaches duty to God and country, that embraces the Scout Law. Yes, an organization whose motto is Be Prepared, and whose slogan is Do a Good Turn Daily. Yahweh, coming at you live and alive from Kennewick, Washington, or Washington, kind of depends who you are around here, I guess. Well, so I tried to do this video a long time ago. It was about a week ago, actually, so not that long ago. And I made it, and I was like, happy birthday, Kent. Apparently it wasn't Kent's birthday, because the news I received, so I have to redo this. So yeah, but if it is your birthday, just in case, happy birthday, if not... Anyways, so, but, the main reason this video is being made for you, Kent, is to say thank you. Thank you for everything you've done. For me, for my family, and for the ward. You've done so much to help out the people of the Santa Clara Heights 4th Ward. You've always been there for them. You've always been there for the young men. I remember all the times when I became a young man. In fact, before those times when you'd come to our house and you'd pick up our older brother to go to some event, and I'd be like, oh, I want to go. And you're like, nah, you're not old enough. And it's like, oh, I don't get to go. But then once I finally became a deacon and I could go, I remembered all the fun times we've had. 
all the good times. You'd always take us fishing, and you've taught us so much. And I remember all the lessons that you've taught me. You've taught me how to be a hard worker and how to be a good man. <laughs> Hang on, it's kind of loud out here with these cars driving by, right? But those are some of the things I want to thank you for. And some of the things that I'm taking personally and trying to use in my mission out here. Trying to work hard like you worked hard. Trying to love like you love. Because you have a lot of love. And you show that with everyone around you, Ken. You share that with the ward. And you've especially shared that with my family and with me. As you've always been willing to take us out camping, fishing, and just helping us around the yard or around our house. You always want to serve everyone in this ward. And you are an important piece to this ward. The things you've done for all the people. So, I'm here to say thank you. To say thank you for everything you've done. I don't know what my life would be like without you in it. Without the lessons that you've taught me and all the things I've learned from you. You truly are a disciple of Jesus Christ. You show an amazing example, an example like Jesus Christ showed. And I'm very thankful for that example. To be able to come out here and to teach these people and to teach them what I've learned from you. All the lessons about Jesus Christ and how you applied them into life, everyday life. We'd go camping and you'd always read scriptures at scout camp with us every night. And you'd always have a story to share. So Ken, again I want to say thank you for everything. Thank you for being the man you are. For teaching me everything I know. And for always being there for me when I needed you. You're an amazing friend to have in life. And I can't wait till one day where we get to go fishing again. But this time, we'll be taking you fishing. Me, and probably my brothers and my family, I don't know. Anyone who really wants to come, I guess. But hey, we'll be taking you fishing. And hopefully I can learn a few things out here that I can teach to you. But Kent, thank you again for your example, for your love, and for your service. And because I'm out here trying to learn a new language in Marshallese. I want to speak to you just a bit in Marshallese. Say to you some words of gratitude and to share my testimony with you. So, here it goes. Igamba komol komotata kamala menko kwar kamane in kwach kamane kamna in daniwao in moreo. Kent kwe juan a man, a man, a man. Lapam Yakwe, in Lapam George. Kanake, Kurjev, Wore Alapian. In a long age, one armage, Raj Aikuj, Kwe, Kunaj Jipang, er. In his Lukun Kumol, boy, Anij. Yer likut kwe ilo more yawao. And it's your late talk opportunity by Imrong Mit Yok. Im Ij lukun komol kake. Kia is Jervi of Kenneth Washington. And it's Kualak at Jer Ipanala Parmij. Ijin. In Ij kuala ki payer ala nanko kwar kata kinye imala menko kwar kuala ki pa ak ijile pwe kabungi na jmol im jis kreis ta jmor imid lukun komol pwe imrong jiv ipenar me jreng im kata kinye im kuala Nan in Kamole wow, Ipayer, a testimony of our Ipayer. Bar Kamol, Kent, Kanala Menko, Ijakwe Yok, Jerama Nankwe. 
We scouts count ourselves a brotherhood, despite the difference among us of country, creed, or class. There is no religious side to the movement. The whole of it is based on religion. That is, on the realization and service of God. try to do our duty. We always fail when we neglect to do it. <laughs> 